Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video and look I've got myself a gaming laptop. I bought this specifically to play Flight Simulator as I'm probably, uh, I'm intending to be travelling later on this year and I needed something portable so I could play Flight Simulator and record videos in good quality for you. So this is a Gigabyte G5 laptop, it's a 3060 laptop. I'm going to give you my impressions, the specifications of the laptop and I'm going to be showing you how Flight Simulator runs on this laptop. I'm also going to be telling you or advising you on what laptops to buy if you want to run Flight Simulator, specifically at minimum spec. So let's not dilly dally, let's get on with the video. Okay, in a moment I'm going to show you Flight Simulator in full screen on the laptop to show you the graphical settings and FPS and all that good stuff. Check the timeline below for the different sections. But first let's go over the specs of this specific laptop and my first impressions. It's running a 3060 uh, RTX graphics card, so it's the 30 series or 3000 series with RTX ray tracing DLSS and I believe that is coming to flight simulator soon. What that does is sharpen the image and increases the FPS, so that's all good. 16 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, 512 NVMe hard drive and a 10500H i5 I believe it's 6 core 12 thread processor which can boost up to 4.5 gigahertz so it all sounds great on paper you've got to keep in mind laptops generally and this is just the way it is with laptops they perform their performance is around 30 percent less than the desktop variant so if this was in desktop form and a big pc you would get roughly 30 percent more performance that's just the way it goes with laptops when I first saw that screen, let's get onto my impressions, I was like, oh, no, I, I almost sent the laptop back. My Dell XPS laptop, which is years old, has a bigger screen than that. This is the modern size screen for this type of laptop. Seems like they all come with this kind of size screen. It's got wonderful viewing angles and very bright and I believe it's 144 refresh rate, so it's not too bad at all. No ghosting and that type of thing. It's just on the bit on the small side. Thankfully, playing Flight Simulator, I have little trouble with it. It does come with three different displays out ports, so you can easily fit a monitor. Kind of defeats the purpose. I'm not going to do that straight away. I may try it at some point, but I want this to be portable. If you're after a truly portable system, if you don't mind the small screen size, like I said, Flight Simulator thankfully looks okay and it actually looks pretty great on it. Playing it from this distance is fine. It wasn't just wasn't a great first impression, but I've got used to it. Keyboards backlit, you can change these colours. This is the default bluish colour. Change it to green, red, all different kinds of whatever colours you want. Feels great, it's even got a numpad, but the keys actually really feel great to type on. No issues there, nice big trackpad as well that works quite well. One thing I do want to draw your attention to, this specific laptop out of the box comes with different power modes. You've got quiet, entertainment and performance and it's pretty much the way they're, they're written there. Quiet, you don't hear the fan. Limits the system performance and fan noise for quiet places. Entertainment, let's just come in a bit more there. Balances among the system's performance, skin temperature and fan noise. Performance enables the maximum system performance. Now you probably can't hear the fan. This camera picks up noise very well, even from a great distance, maybe 10 feet away, you get really good noise with this camera. It's probably a setting I need to turn down, but I actually quite like it at the moment. So the fans are gonna sound louder. I'm gonna show you the different sorts of fan noises. Let's go to entertainment. So this sort of balances to give you more performance. I'll sit back, pretty much the distance at which I'll be playing the laptop. Let it ramp up. 
There you go. I know the camera is picking this sound up more than what I'm hearing it. It's pretty much... I do have flight simulator running in the background in Windows mode, by the way. So there's... it, it is attributing those system sort of settings to flight simulator. It's pretty much what a laptop would sound generally on the load. Maybe a little bit louder. But that's durable, especially with headphones. And I'm kind of used to that with my Dell XPS, to be honest. It's what you've got to get used to with laptops. Performance, on the other hand... Let's just switch to performance. Give it a second. Ah! It's like having a, 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 a hairdryer. Listen to that. It's like having a hairdryer <laughs> next to the laptop. Or inside the laptop, going off. Wouldn't recommend performance. I would recommend entertainment. That's not too bad a sound from entertainment. And it's certainly playable with headphones and goodness knows what. If you really... I mean, it takes a moment for the fans to throttle back so you're not hearing entertainment properly. If you really want a probably the, the quietest laptop I've heard, put it in quiet mode. The trouble is, in something like Flight Simulator, the FPS difference between quiet and entertainment is about 10 FPS. You can still hear the fans, it takes time to throttle back properly, like throttle back slowly. It's about 10 FPS difference. The difference between entertainment and performance is minimal. I wouldn't recommend performance at, at all. It'll drive you up the wall, the noise for one thing. If you really want a quiet laptop, you share a house, you're playing things late at night, quiet is the way to go. As you can hear, now it's ramped down, you can barely hear that. I typically have it in entertainment mode though, and that's fine for Flight Simulator. Another thing, just before we jump to Microsoft Flight Simulator footage, I paid around £950. I'll, come, I'll mention this, I'll talk about this in more detail later. My original budget was about £750. I just paid a bit more for that 3060 graphics card and increased performance with this laptop. And as you'll see, it does actually give some fairly good performance. So now let's jump to Flight Simulator and show you the performance on this laptop. So as you can see, I'm flying over London city centre. Not surprising with my videos, you're probably used to this by now. I've got the details turned up to mainly high. I've got developers mode on, and as you can see, I'm hitting quite often near 60 frames a second in a busy area like London, which is not bad at all. Now I do have GeForce experience recording this, so add on a couple of frames if that wasn't recording. and. I do have my laptop in entertainment mode, there you go, over 60 frames a second now. In entertainment mode, you have entertainment and the top will be performance. I'll show you those settings later, how it performs in different settings. But as you can see, yeah, no complaints with the frames per second there. I don't frame hunt in flight simulators. It's a lost cause with Microsoft Flight Simulator, the very best PC in the world. Well, okay, the very best available PC in the world will struggle with ultra settings, everything ultra, to get 60 frames a second in 4K. There may be one or two PCs out there that may do that, but you'll be paying thousands upon thousands. Don't frame chase. I look to get about 40 to 50, and I'm well over 50 there, as you can see. Let's go straight into my general options. Temper your experience or your expectations with a 360 or 370 laptop. <clears throat> You're not going to get everything in ultra settings. I was wondering, I thought I would run things in high settings. It does run in high, but it goes down to 30 to 40 frames. I just altered a couple of things. So as you can see there, I've got a couple of things in medium, like terrain vector detail high and buildings high, trees and grass, I don't mind them being in medium to be honest. Clouds I want in high, I'll probably push that to ultra at some point. I'm still very much playing around with the settings, I'm showing you how it is out of the box. I've not even messed with the NVIDIA control panel, which will bump up my FPS more. And when DLSS hits, that's going to bump up the FPS probably as well. Texture synthesis high, water waves high, various different settings, a couple of things on medium. I don't like uh, things like, for example, 
uh, motion blur. I'm not a fan of that in games generally. Glass cockpit I kept on low. Actually, if I push that to medium, it shouldn't make much of a difference there. Let's just see. So we'll go back. Yep, still over 50 frames in the cockpit. I'll be getting near to probably, well, yeah, 50, 60, as you can see there. This FPS counter, don't rely on this. This is just the flight sim developer's mode. It's not the most accurate, but it gives you an idea. I am quite happy with that. I got the London Orbits Landmark Pack installed as well. So that's pushing it a little bit too. I'm quite happy with those settings. It depends what you're after. If you're after 4K settings with a laptop, you may be disappointed. You may get that with the 3080 Ti laptop and max memory, max processor and goodness knows what. But you might as well go for the desktop version if that's what you're after. I was looking to get about 50 frames a second. I'm getting that on average or over that. I've got uh, scattered clouds on to give some clouds effect, just so, because that can uh, affect the FPS as well. But as you can see, yeah, quite happy with that indeed. Let me just show you the difference between the performance modes. I've got it on entertainment, let's stick it on performance. You probably hear some fan noise now. Okay, the fans are throttling up properly. Yeah, okay, it's bumping up the FPS. A little bit and it's not too noisy in the performance mode it's noisier and you won't be doing that late at night yeah I'm getting more towards 60 going right into the center of London there so I could definitely bump up more settings there in performance mode let's just put it on quiet just to show you the difference we'll have to wait for those fans to throttle back let me just get in my cockpit and get a bit lower. So the fans are thrusting back, as you can see, even on quiet. Now wait for those fans to throttle back completely. Typically, I was getting about 30 to 40 in quiet mode, which is not bad. If you just want to do a quick flight late at night, or you, sh you, know, you don't want to wake people up, it's doable. As you can see there, I'm still getting over 50, and that's in quiet mode. Now it's going down a little bit as it kicks in properly. Not bad at all. The one I have it on is entertainment. It's like the best medium and it's where I'm roughly, well I'm pretty much consistently reaching the 50 frames a second. Once the fans kick in, let the fans kick in. There you go. Over 50 frames a second. Yeah, so not bad. And this is in a busy area, in a more rural area, well over 60 or over 60 consistently. This is just because there's a lot of buildings, as you can see. And the FPS counter is not the most reliable, but it does give you an idea. I am very happy with that. Okay, let me now go to my recommendation guide for buying specifically the minimum spec laptop to run flight simulator at acceptable settings okay so now I come to the buying guide my recommendations for buying a laptop to play flight simulator and I'm gonna concentrate more on the minimum or lower budget laptops I mean if you're gonna buy a laptop to play flight simulator in ultra settings 4k you're looking three four thousand pound well within that price range and you might as well go for the desktop variants unless you really want to just have a laptop and you don't want a desktop PC but I'm gonna stay away from that because that's not the budget that I was looking for. My original budget was about 700, 750 pounds. That's what I expected to pay for a minimum spec laptop that can run flight simulator in medium to high settings, similar to my desktop PC at about 40 frames. Laptops within that range currently, check the date of this video, they're either coming in with 8GB of RAM or 256GB hard drive, and neither, in my recommendation, is enough for playing flight sim. You really want, at a minimum, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB hard drive. With the hard drive, if you buy a 256GB laptop, 
Then Windows is going to take some space up. The tools on the laptop is going to take some space up. You're going to struggle with updates and add-ons to, to actually load in or to play Flight Simulator properly. Now I'm going to link something on screen. Originally I was looking at the 1650 Ti. And as you can see there, just from what I'm linking, you get decent settings. I mean, decent depends what decent means to you. But enough settings to play the lap play Flight Simulator at medium to high settings. And 1650 Ti laptops, if you're lucky, you can get them for around 700, 750, maybe 800 with 16 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte uh, hard drive space. At that point, I saw this and saw that it had a 3060, so ray tracing DLSS and goodness knows what, and I thought, look, I might as well go that extra mile and buy this for £950. My links are down below for my uh, Amazon affiliate in the UK and US, so if you're going to buy this, please support me by buying it from there. I would completely recommend this. Don't go for a laptop that's lower than the 1650 Ti. Let me put this on screen as well. So the minimum spec for me, what I'll be looking for, to buy a laptop to play Flight Simulator at decent settings, medium to high, so it's kind of minimum spec you want to go for, would be a 1650 Ti graphics card, 16 gigabytes of RAM, either a Ryzen or Intel processor with at least six cores, the more cores the better, running at at least three, three gigahertz and, and boosting up maybe up to four gigahertz or 3.8 and a 512 gigabyte NVMe hard drive, which a lot of these laptops come, if you're buying a gaming laptop, it's likely going to come with an NVMe. Just don't go lower or you'd be paying more to upgrade the laptop and possibly voiding your warranty. So those are my absolute minimum recommendations for buying a laptop to play Flight Simulator. I wouldn't go much lower than that. You may get lucky. Don't buy a laptop with an integrated graphics card like the sort of Intel integrated graphics card or the Ryzen integrated graphics card. You want a dedicated graphics card, ideally with six gigabytes of memory, but four, you can probably get away with that. I would recommend getting... Like I said, I would recommend going for something like this. And I've not finished playing with my settings yet, so I can likely bump them up. But listen, do let me know your thoughts, your own thoughts on this video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and it's been helpful to you. Subscribe for more, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.